Welcome again. Right now we're at John chapter 14, verses 5 and 6. Jesus, the way to the Father. Let's read it. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Now, in context here, you know, this was just shortly after Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. They almost received him as king and savior for good. And he started really just giving his disciples a pep talk. He started talking about going somewhere. So Thomas is, is, is basically replying Jesus at this point. So let's read it one more time. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Wow, this is like the best, or if not one of the best scriptures, one of the best verses when it comes to witnessing about Jesus, okay? It is an awesome, awesome scripture. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, you got to think, though. You got to think. You got to think. You know, I say often that that Christians, uh, a lot of Christians, not all of them, like to pick and choose uh, different portions of Scripture, a passage here, a passage there, a verse here, a verse there, even a part verse here, a part verse there. But let's think about this for a minute, okay? Now, a lot of evangelists and a lot of Christians, when they witness or when they talk about Jesus, when they talk about Christianity and when they try to convert people over to Christianity, they use this verse. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And what they do is they say that no one comes to God. Like nobody can come to God except through Jesus. But you got to think for a moment here. It says in the scripture over and over and over again. I mean, right from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, time and time again, we got even Satan himself coming to God, okay? Coming to the presence of God, coming before the throne of God, talking to God like he did in the Garden of Eden, uh, talking to God like he did in the book of Job, talking to God. You know, even the book of Revelation talks about how Satan comes before the throne of God and accuses the brothers day and night. The accuser of the brethren, they call him. So the devil comes to God and communicates with God in such a clear way that even Christians would love to have that kind of connection with God. And you could say, how is it that Satan has that access to God? But you try to tell me that nobody can come to God except through Jesus. So let's look at this a little bit deeper. Jesus did not say, okay, no one can come to God except through me. He said, nobody can come to the Father. This is the difference. This is the hallmark of Christianity. This is the hallmark of what Jesus taught, is that God is Father. He hardly ever called God, God. He always referred to God as Father. The only time he called God, God, was on the cross when he became sin for us, okay? The term God comes from the Hebrew word Elohim, which is always in the context of judgment or in the context of being separate from God or separated from God. Never in the context of being in covenant relationship with God, okay? So Satan comes to God, but he doesn't come to the Father. He doesn't know God as the Father. You might say, you know, other religions, they talk a lot about God, okay? The creator of heaven and earth, whatever, you know, you want to call him. All of the other religions, all of the other world religions talk about and teach people about coming to God. But this religion, but Jesus talks about people coming to know 
the Father, coming to the Father, not to God. So let me make it very clear. Jesus did not say that no one can come to God except through him. Because if that were the case, the devil himself couldn't go to God. Okay, People can go to God. People can pray. In fact, there are people, I would say that God even can hear prayers. Like he heard the devil's prayer, for example. When the devil was talking to God, God heard him and God answered him and they had a dialogue. So if God listens to and answers the prayers of the devil, why wouldn't he listen to and answer the prayers of other people in certain circumstances, okay? I say certain circumstances because a lot of times God doesn't bother with even listening to a lot of prayers. They're just not, I mean, like it says in the book of Psalms, if I regard iniquity in my heart, you know, the Lord will not listen to me. There are certain circumstances when God just will not listen to or will not answer your prayer anyway. Uh, that's another whole topic. But I say God can, and I don't see why God wouldn't listen to at least some, at least a few uh, prayers of the people who don't come to him through the name of Jesus, okay? And I say that because God, we know for sure in the Bible that God answers and hears the prayers of the devil. He does, okay? Why wouldn't he other people? So the point here is, what kind of relationship do you have with God? Do you have a relationship with God like the devil does? Do you know God is God? Do you know the scriptures? The devil does. Do you know that Jesus died and rose again? The devil does. You know, do you even go to church? The, the devil does. But do you really know the Father? Okay, that's a totally different thing. That's a completely different thing. Jesus said, you cannot come to the Father. You cannot go to God and, and really, in truth and in spirit, say, my Father, without coming through Jesus, without coming through the faith of Christ. It's like how Paul said himself, he said, the spirit within us calls out Abba Father. So the spirit of God causes us to call unto God, Father, not O God, not O, o Holy One of, of the universe, not O Creator. No, no. That's the way the devil knows God. Do you know God as Creator? Do you know God as just God? Or do you know God as Father? That is where it all lies. That is the difference, okay? Yes, it is possible to come to God without coming through Jesus. The devil does. But it's not possible to come to the Father in truth and in spirit calling out Father without coming through Jesus. So as you go, may God enrich the understanding that you have of heaven, of him, okay? May God give you the spirit of revelation so that you would see things in the word of God, that you would see things in the scriptures that you've never seen before. And may God open your mind. Because, of the, you know, there are a lot of Christians that are so narrow-minded, they, <laughs> they cut out the truth. They dwarf themselves spiritually because they're so narrow-minded. Do we read the scriptures and do we believe them? Absolutely. Okay, this is what it's all about. Reading the scriptures, believing the scriptures, getting to the bottom of it in its original context, not only scriptural context, but also cultural context. Thanks again for listening, and God bless you with rich revelation, wisdom, and understanding. Thanks again.